Hey there, let's talk about Beats philosophy. My name is Matias Capelletto, but you may know me as Patak. I'm a Beatcore team member and also part of other projects like Vitest and Elk. I work at the Stagblitz, where I get to focus full time on the Beat ecosystem. And I couldn't be more excited to be speaking at the second Bitconf. It is amazing to see so many folks from the ecosystem gather together to make this conference happen. A big shout out to all the speakers, to the community, to community partners, and to the Stagblitz team. They all have put a ton of work into crafting a great experience for everybody. So I really hope you enjoy it a lot. And talking about the Stagblitz, before we start, and given that being friendly to contributors is part of the project's philosophy, I like to do a call to action to check out CodeFlow. In Bitcore, we have been using Stagrids for our starters and bug reproduction for years. But a few months ago, we also enabled CodeFlow in the repo. So if you send a PR or an issue, you're going to get a message from the CodeFlow app with a review PR or fix this issue button. And if we click it, you're going to get an environment with VS Code online. With the, here we can check the PR. And this is powered by web containers, so it's running Node locally in your browser. You have PMPM, Git, and also extensions working. So you have the full local experience. And let's check. So if we check the PR, this is modifying some docs. It has built vit and is now going to wait for changes. So we can create a new terminal and pmpm run docs to see. Yeah, here is our bitpress docs running web containers. So check it out and tell us how it works for you. Going back, why an open source project should have a philosophy? It allows us to have clear goals and a well-defined scope for the project. It aligns contributors and users when working on new features and fixes. We can also better justify our decisions when discussing priorities and trade-off and the roadmap of the project. These are some of our main principles today. It is not an extensive list. Vitcore is lean and extendable. It aims to be a solid base layer to build frameworks and tools. We encourage ecosystem players to be actively involved in Bit's development. Bit pushes for the modern web, and it has a pragmatic approach to performance. So let's expand on each of them. Bit has a lean extendable core. It aims to support well-established and common patterns to build web apps and frameworks, while at the same time keeping a small API surface. We don't want to end up with hundreds of mangled options in config files. So we need to ensure long-term maintainability and avoid overcomplexity for our users. How do we do it though? Vit has been able to stay lean thanks to its rollup based plugin system. It allows Vit to be framework agnostic and tooling agnostic. It gives maintainer of downstream projects a clean and flexible API to extend Vit core to fit their needs. Vit's adoption of rollup plugin API was one of the keys to its success. It allowed the Vit team to keep Vit core maintainable avoiding built-in features in favor of user land solutions where possible. If you have contributed with us in the past, you know that if a feature request can be implemented as a plugin, we have a very good justification to avoid adding it to Bitcore. Vit as a base layer for frameworks and tools. It is possible to use Vit by itself, but it was designed to serve as the engine of higher level tooling. On top of its plugin system, Bit exposes a powerful JavaScript API. It has server-side rendering primitives built in, and it can be used also to improve the X of backend frameworks like Rails or Laravel. Bitcore is framework agnostic, but there are polished plugins for all modern frameworks. So tools don't have to replicate all this work. 
And framework maintainers, like we said before, are able to share even more among them through common plugins. This led to a wide ecosystem of frameworks and tools to choose Vite. Meta frameworks are being built on top of Vite or have it as a default, like Nact, XVelkit, QuickCity, Solid Start, Redwood, Marco Run, Analog.js, and more are coming. Tools like Playwright and Storybook have also adopted it. And new tools have emerged like Vitest, a bit native unit test framework. We are going to hear about most of these projects in other talks at BitConf, so I let their team share them with us. An active ecosystem. We encourage the ecosystem players to get involved and participate in Vit's API design and development. There has been a tons of Chrome framework collaboration, both through building shared plugins and also maintainers helping each other when integrating their projects with Vit. One of the best examples of this collaboration is Vit Ecosystem CI. Dominic led the creation of a tool that allows us to run the CIs of the top projects in the ecosystem against the main branch of Vit. Or as you can see in the screenshot, against any PR. So we can assess the state of the ecosystem before releasing a change. This scheme has helped us avoid uncountable regressions, working with maintainers of downstream projects to fix issues before they hit their users. And it has been one of the secrets of why Vit has stay so solid. Push it for a modern web. Bit is part of a new generation of tools that embrace the future of the web platform. CJS dependencies are of course supported. There are a lot of CJS only packages in NPM, but user code must be authored in ESM. And where possible, we are going to push for a ESM only future. Vit doesn't polyfill no modules in the browser. Two years ago, this was a big pain point for users migrating from tools like Webpack 4 that included polyfills by default. Several pack packages were broken back then, but it was the right long-term call. The community and maintainers have fixed most of these packages. Bit also aligns with web standards. As an example, Vit2 implemented worker support using a worker query suffix. But after 2.9, the standard syntax based on new URL was supported and recommended. Finally, a pragmatic approach to performance. Of course, Vit has focused on performance since its origin. Its biggest selling point at first was its unbundled dev server which gave users a snappy hot model reload that stay fast as the project scales. To do it, Vit relied on modern browser features and also on native tools like ESBuild, SWC, and Lighting CSS to implement exp expensive tasks. But it takes a pragmatic approach in the sense that it uses JS-based tooling where the trade-off makes sense today. For example, it currently chooses Rollup during build due to its flexibility and mature ecosystem. But what is important is that by choosing Vit, you are buying into its API and into the ecosystem. You are embedding on the way it is implemented today. Vit internals will continue evolving and improving while keeping the API stable. Vit4.3 was a great example of performance improvement that benefited a big number of users and downstream projects without needing code changes on their side. The internal resolve algorithm and other hot paths were optimized without a fake affecting Vit API. A big shout out to Jorn Lu and all others involved in this particular effort for large projects we saw dev server call star improvement of up to 75% and 40% for warm start. And 
the time for hot model reload also saw up to 50% improvement. And these changes were released without disruption as part of a bit, a bit minor. So bit consistency also play an important role in making this possible. That's the end of this journey. As a final note, it is important that the philosophy of the project will also keep evolving as the user base, the ecosystem, and the web itself continues to change. And that is all. Thanks so much for listening to the talk. And if you are interested in building uh, tools and in developer experience, join the Bit community and collaborate with us. Thanks to everyone who keeps working on making Bit Bit better. And I wish a great BitConf to you all. See you.